Mechanical skill is vital to your development as a player. If you have poor mechanics, even if you understand what you need to do, you're gonna have problems turning conceptual plans into in-game actions. In order to supplement that, let's break down the top 10 things that you need to do and know to get Grandmaster Mechanical Skill. If you need more clarification on any of the topics that we cover in this video, definitely go check out GameLeap.com. But enough talking, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing on our list is knowing the complete capabilities of your character and what tools you have to execute a plan. This is things like understanding what a character's effective range is, what tools they have to win matchups, and what mechanical attributes on that character do you need to execute consistently each and every time. Let's talk first about about effective range. You're a McCree against a Widowmaker. McCree has a mid to close effective range. If you're dueling a Widow outside of your effective range and in hers, you're at a fundamental disadvantage. Imagine a Widowmaker all across the map. How many times are you gonna have to shoot her in order for her to die? Maybe four, five, six, depending on her distance because of your fall off. She only has to hit one single headshot against you and you're gonna lose the matchup outright. Even if she misses five in a row, she still could win the duel. Unless you have no choice, never take duels or engagements with people that are in their effective range when you're not in your effective range. Another thing that you need to understand is what are the tools on McCree that can help you win a matchup. You have a roll that can give you slight mobility, help you close the gap. You have a flashbang with a length of 7 meter distance and a radius of 3 meters. This is 10 meters total and when coupled with a 6.25 meter roll, you have about a 16 meter range of flash on McCree. This means that if you can get an enemy into that 16 meter range and you can instantly roll into them and flashbang them, followed by double headshot, you can win a matchup instantly. However, you understand the wind condition, but if you don't have the mechanical capacity to hit the double headshot after you flash the enemy, then you're not going to be able to win the matchup even if on paper you should have. This is why mechanical skill is so important. Even if you do everything right, even if you understand the wind condition, even if you understand what you have to do, if you can't execute these simple hit shots after a flashbang or in a number of situations we're going to talk about later, then you're going to end up losing matchups that you should have won. Now we already talked about it a little bit, but the second point on the list is understanding the win condition and play towards said condition. We talked about the rolling and flashing and double headshotting example, but the thing that's really important to take away from this is static mechanical executions need to be able to be executed at 100% consistency or close to it. You should almost never be missing a flashbang headshot. Very simple thing to hit, very consistent, and it should be something that you practice for. I'm gonna give you some suggestions on where you can practice it later, but the most important thing that you need to understand is if you completely outplay an enemy, you get close enough to them, you route to them, you manage to roll into them, flashbang them, do whatever you have to do to get to that point, but you miss the headshots afterwards, all of the proper decision making that you made all the way up to that point, all the outplays that you made up to that point are completely neutralized because the static mechanical execution that you needed to perform, you failed at. This is a mechanical skill that's so important, and luckily for you, no matter what level of player you are, if you put in practice, you can get this to near 100% consistency. I'm going to talk about some other examples in a little bit besides just McCree flashbang, but for now, it's the most obvious example that I think is the clearest to you. Now moving on to point number three, your win condition could go even further than this. Imagine an enemy McCree high nooning you when you're in the open as a Hanzo. Maybe you don't have lunge or you know that you cannot possibly lunge or wall climb anywhere to get out of that McCree's LOS. In that exact scenario, the win condition is to headshot the McCree and that's your only win condition and you have to try for that win condition. Whether you hit the shot or not will come down to mechanical skill, but if you never try to actually execute the win condition, you'll have no chance in the matchup. If you misevaluate and you try to run away when the high noon is going to kill you no matter what, then you didn't even give yourself a shot to win the matchup. What I'm saying here is there's a lot of different avenues to winning 1v1s than just raw mechanical skill. It's also understanding when you need to use your mechanical skill to try to win a matchup or when there's another alternative altogether. Understanding the win condition is very important for this. Now moving on to point number four here is understand that there's a relationship between gain sense, positioning, and mechanical skill. Having good positioning can level the playing field against a worse mechanically skilled player versus a better one. A bad mechanically skilled player on the high ground can go probably 50-50 against a little bit of a better player on the low ground. A player who knows the cooldowns of an enemy, better game sense, can match their aggressive or defensive play styles at more appropriate times. When the enemy has dash, when the enemy has flash, being able to understand these cooldowns in your head, you can match the aggressive the temperament to what abilities that the enemy has. If you don't know these cooldowns, you don't know these things 
things. You're never going to change your playstyle based on what things your enemy has or lacks. While mechanical skill could definitely triumph in a true head-to-head, -head, when all things are equal, the best players never create a fair fight in the first place. So the next tip, tip number five on our list, is learn the gameplay of your enemies. What is their win condition and how does that play into what you want to do? The Genji may want to spam from range, do enough damage to dash you, or dash you and reflect your flash. Understanding what tools an enemy has and their game plan can help you develop a way to play around this and win anyways. This also includes things like learning reflect cooldowns or tracer blink distances, but essentially what I'm saying here is understanding what the enemy is trying to do to you is the best way to figure out a tactic against this. I'm going to break that down a little bit more in this next tip. So the next tip, tip number six, is understand the difference between pressure and performance. Have you ever been in a training room and hit every single shot, but in a real game, you seem to miss most of them? This is because of two things, pressure and movement. Sporadic movement is way harder to hit than static movement, but even more jarring is pressure. Hitting shots when you are under no threat is incredibly easy comparatively. The more pressure you are under to hit your shots, the more likely you are to miss them. Ironic. This is why hitting shots when you absolutely need to is actually when you are least likely to hit your shots. Now to become numb to this, I would definitely suggest try hard free for all more than anything because you're kind of overloaded with tons of enemies coming after you, Genji's tracers, things like that. In fact, all the footage in the background is just from a morning of me grinding and grinding try hard free for all. I do that often when a lot of heroes. Try hard free for all is the biggest thing that I attribute to my improvement as a player, but I'm going to talk about that when I talk about the practice section in a second. But but before we get to that, inversely, you need to understand the thing about pressure is that enemies are the exact same way as you. The more pressure that you put on them, the more they're most likely to mess up. If you're faster on a Genji Blade, if you hit more shots really close range on a Reaper, the more shots you put into a Tracer or a Genji, you're going to force out abilities. You're going to force out panic. You're going to make them mess up. Putting more damage into a Tracer might force out a recall. Putting more shots into the enemy when you're a Reaper maybe might force the enemy to recreate a flashbang, which you wraith and bait out. Putting more pressure on them as a Genji could make the Ana just completely whiff her sleep dart. Pressure is one of the most important factors in whether or not you could hit or miss a shot. And if you could learn how to perform under pressure, that can really differentiate you from just being a regular mechanically talented player to someone who has the mechanics of a Grand Master player. A Grand Master player has to sleep dart the nano blading Genji that's right on top of them. A Grand Master player cannot miss the headshot of a high unit McCree. These are the moments that can define you as a player, and whether you hit or miss or perform the mechanical skill required, that is the difference between you card carrying your team and maybe your whole team dying to Dragon Blade, your whole team dying to High Noon. It's very important for you to understand the relationship between pressure and performance so that you can work to overcome it. Now moving on to point number seven, this is going to be the big crux of the video, but you need to practice like a madman. Overwatch is my first PC game, and when I started, my mechanics were trashed here, and I mean extremely bad. Even after I climbed all the way to Diamond, that took me tons and tons of hours, and I'm talking near a thousand hours, probably plus. Even after I climbed to Diamond, my mechanics were really terrible. I put many, many hours into comp and try hard free throw, learned movement patterns, matchups, and became even more and more able to click heads. Mechanical skill will not easily develop, but it will never develop if you're extremely rusty. If you only practice or play the game one day a week, your mechanical skill is going to improve at a snail's pace. Try to play every day, grinding mechanically specific heroes that you want to focus on, focus your practice time, and you'll become better more rapidly. I got insanely better mechanically over the course of six months because I played the most amount condensed in that time, as opposed to the vast majority of my time I spent really inefficiently. Trying to hyper-focus your practice time can definitely help you do this. Now, moving on to tip number eight, this is just learn the movement of your character specifically and how to abuse it versus x matchup i'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this because movement is a conversation that you need to have over the course of a whole video in fact not even a whole video more like a 60 minute video plus i suggest sure for videos that are really in depth you can go search them up on youtube he's going to break down the relationship between lethality and movement but i'm going to let him explain all that because i don't think i could ever condense that into a 10 minute video not even a 20 or 30 minute video now moving on to tip number nine you need to use the psa method to find your perfect sense and stick to it psa method is another thing that you could find on other videos it's a really complicated process but it's worth your time find the perfect sensitivity for you controller players just find that perfect sensitivity and 
and try to stick with it. There's many videos out there to figure this out, but that's not the important takeaway here. The thing that you need to understand is you need to stick to your sensitivity to build muscle memory. Many people will come to me and they'll play a little bit of hours, 20, 30, 40 hours, and they're not hitting the shots they want to, and they just try to switch. They're like, oh, I'm going to switch my sensitivity. This doesn't feel right. Let's play this sensitivity. Oh, I played 30 hours on this one. I'm still not hitting my shots. Let's move on to the next one. Here's the thing that you need to understand. Your mechanical skill isn't going to come out of nowhere. It's not going to come to you overnight. You're not going to be able to perform in Instantly, you need to take your time. You need to develop that muscle memory. Find a sensitivity using one of these methods. Stick with it. Play with it for a long time until you give yourself time to develop that muscle memory. Then at that point, you can reevaluate and say, maybe I don't need the sensitivity. But don't play hot scotch with your sensitivity. Don't go one to the next to the next. That's how you hinder your progress. Now, the last thing, tip number 10, is don't overthink everything. I know I say this after I brought you with a ton of info about mechanical skill and different matchups and things like that, but you won't develop your skill overnight. Don't think of things like self-correction or adjusting degrees of your aim or anything like that. None of that matters. Your mechanical skill will develop over time if you make sure to put in the effort every day. You're going to set yourself up to succeed if you understand a lot of the things I talked about earlier about understanding what your win condition is and practicing the mechanical skills required so that you can consistently do what you need to in order to win matchups you know hitting the headshots on mccree consistently after flash being able to dash into an enemy and instantly right click melee them these are the static mechanical things that you need to be able to hit 100 percent of the time and you can definitely practice them 100 percent of the time now if you want to get even more consistent at these you definitely need to go check out gameleap.com we have a whole mechanical section that's definitely geared to help you improve your mechanical skill so if you feel like your aim is trashed here and you really want to improve go check it out you don't even have to take my word for it gameleap.com offers a 10-day money-back guarantee so come check us out risk free i mean what do you have to lose anyways i hope this guy has been extremely helpful for you any questions please leave them in the comments down below that's all i have for you today i'm coach mills and until next time